In last video, I spoke about using 2DFX shadows for light mapping, but these only work for the ground and not for walls and such. Therefore, I thought I would make a guide for wall IES lights and how to generate them yourself from IES lighting profiles. These lights work the same way as the shadow mapping taught in one of the previous guides. It is just an overlaying mesh with a transparent texture. You will still need to use vertex colors to get the base pre-light done. Some key points to consider with this method is, the texture needs to have alpha channel if you want it to be an overlay. The additive model flag doesn't work on GTA PC version. Also, the light mesh doesn't illuminate the object. It's simply a texture like a gang spray. That being said, it can be a useful trick to make your lighting more detailed without having to subdivide your model. Just like shadow mapping, the light overlays also need model flag 64, which disables Z buffer. Because without this flag, you can only draw down to 35% opacity. With this being said, I want to go over how to create your light textures. There are a few methods of doing this, and all of them require some amount of photo editing. Hopefully, you will only need to do this one time until you have a library of light textures. Speaking of light libraries, did you know you can download thousands of free IES light presets from ieslibrary.com? This is one of the largest libraries of IES lights with previews of each preset, so you can easily pick the one you like. You can also download IES light profiles from lighting manufacturers, such as Philips. For this video, I will just use the light profiles already found in 3ds Max though. If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to Max Legacy and restart 3ds Max. Start by creating a plane of, say, 8 square meters at the center of the scene. Make it white. Rotate it around so that it'll stand up. Create a camera facing the plane. It doesn't matter how far away it is from the plane for now. Set up your render settings. I will choose 128 by 128 and lock the aspect ratio. For the file output, I will choose a folder in this guide's folder. Set render to only capture through the selected camera. I will now talk about the different methods of generating light textures. Unfortunately, method 2 is usually not a good approach if you want to keep file sizes low, and so this video will only go through method 1. Method 1 is where you render a small portion of the plane, just enough for the strongest levels of the light to fit into your camera. Method 1 is perfect for those who are fine with clamping the low and fine light details out of the image, but it takes more time to edit in post but in turn, it allows for much smaller file sizes. Method 2 is where you render the entire plane and ensure that all of the lighting fit within the boundaries of the plane. Method 2 is perfect for those who do not want to clamp the blacks and whites, but it takes more time to set up and also wastes a lot of texture size for detail that may hardly be seen. Method 2 won't be covered in this video, but it involves setting render mode as blow up and using auto region to capture only the selected plane. You then set light intensity to capture all light levels within that plane. You then load it into an image editing app and check if there are any blacks in the image by clamping it. If there aren't any blacks, then it means the light is too strong or the plane is too small. With this in mind, let's now begin with the main method. For the light, I will just create a photometric free light. This will end up giving us a result similar to the Corona Star in game.
try rendering the plane through the camera using the Shift Q hotkey. We will now have to modify the light strength and the camera's distance to the plane. As you can see, the light is made up of a white core, a gray outer ring, and then a much softer fade into darkness. If we wanted to capture the entire fade, then we would need the texture to be high resolution to capture all that information. That is not what we want. Instead, we can capture just the main rings and then clamp the blacks and whites in post. I'll tweak the light and camera position enough to only have a small amount of breathing room between the canvas and the outer ring. The rest will be reduced down later when editing the image. Once you are happy with the result, ensure that your render output is configured as shown earlier in this video. The next step we need to do is clamp the colors and turn the black background into alpha channel to turn this image transparent. I am using GIMP, which is a free image editing application. You can also use Photoshop. If you are using paint.net, then you will need plugins. Once you are in your photo editing program, import the rendered image. You now have two options. Option one is creating transparency straight from the image without clamping colors. Option two is first clamping colors and then creating transparency. I will go over both options. Start by creating a colored background such as blue as this can make it easier to see the changes you are making. For option one, we just jump straight into adding alpha channel to the image. We can tweak the transparency threshold to clear out the outer fade and then to visualize the alpha mask, use the opacity threshold. Now just hide the blue background layer and here you have your transparent light texture. Export it as DDS using DXT5 compression or PNG for quick previewing and compatibility purposes. For option two, import the image back in. We will first clamp the blacks and whites. You can do this in a number of ways, but I prefer using levels. The first change we should make is define the alpha mask. Do this by increasing the input black levels. Then pull the gray slider all the way to the left to better visualize the alpha mask. Once the alpha mask looks good, you can also make changes to the white and gray levels if you don't like the result. I will leave it as is. You can now add alpha mask to it just like you did in option one. The image from option two is the one I will be using for the remainder of this video, and so I will save that as PNG. Before we move on to actually using these light textures, I want to quickly talk about using IES light profiles. If you go into light settings and choose a template such as Forfer Frift Pendant Fluorescent, you'll notice the light mode turns into a photometric web and gives us IES controls. We can also load custom IES light profiles within this interface. Now, how you use these light textures is really simple. To keep this video short, I will load in an interior model from the game. For the light texture, create a plane with no segments. Create a RW material using our image as texture. Add this material to the plane. The plane can be any size. You can also change the opacity of the material if you don't want the inner circle to be that white.
The way to visualize the opacity is through object properties. Once you have found an opacity value that works for you, just copy paste it into the material. Object properties in 3ds Max doesn't translate to the game, so only use these for 3ds Max viewing purposes. Whenever you make changes to the material opacity, the changes only affect the material, not the texture. That means you won't have to make the changes to the texture file itself. To make placing these light textures easier, you can use the spacing tool, the array tool or modifier, or the place tool. For the place tool, just make sure that the plane pivot is offset one or two centimeters behind the plane so that the plane will be correctly offset away from the geometry it's supposed to be projecting onto. When working with these light textures, it can be useful to use vertex colors. These are useful not just for toning down the exposure of the lights, but also for colorizing them. 